from now on, if I need to pre-validate a form, all I need to do is use the pre-validate composable and then inside my controller, I can continue validating the request like I usually do. No additional changes are required. So here I have a very basic contact page. I'm using some of the default breeze components. Then I have a form with a couple of fields, a submit method that posts the form to this contact store route, and then I have the template. This is how it looks. It's nothing special, just a basic contact form. Now, there are four steps we need to make in order to pre-validate Inertia.js forms. The first one is we need to keep track of the fields that were touched or changed by the user. Then we need to make a validation request when we focus out of the form. And if the validation fails, we need to show errors only for the touched fields. Now, if the validation passes, we should prevent the route action from executing and just redirect back. So the first thing I'm going to do is track the fields that have been touched, or better said, changed by the user. We'll sort those fields in a set. A set is just like a regular array. The main difference is that a set cannot contain duplicate values. So we'll do let touch fields equals new set. Now to track the changed fields, I'll create a watcher for the form data. So we'll do watch form data, and then we'll have new data and all the data. Here we'll do let changed fields equals to object keys of new data, filter, field, and then we'll need to compare the two values. We'll do new data of field is not equal to old data of field. And this will give us the changed fields. To update the touched field set, we'll do touched fields equals to new set, we'll pass it an array, and then we'll use the structuring to get the values from changed fields and whatever we previously had in touched fields. So now, whenever the form data changes, we update the touch field set with whatever fields have been changed. Let's log this in the console. Go in the browser, refresh. Watch is not defined. We need to import the watch function from view. Try again. So now, every time we make changes to the form, we'll know exactly what fields have been changed. This will help us with number three, as we'll only show the errors for those fields that have been changed. Moving on, we'll go to our form element and add the listener for the focus out event, and we'll call a validate method. Let's add the method, log something to the console, go in the browser, refresh, focus in, and then when we focus out, the validate function executes. Now here we'll make a manual inertia request, so we'll do inertia, and we'll import inertia from inertia.js, visit, we'll pass it the contact store route, the method will be post, we'll have data which will be form data, and we'll pass it an additional pre-validate parameter, which we'll use later to tell Laravel that we don't actually want to execute the route action, we just want to validate the request and return back. And of course, we also want to preserve the state and the scroll position. Then what we need to do next is grab the errors, filter them to only keep the touched fields errors, and assign them to our inertia form object. So we'll do on error, and we'll receive the errors. We'll do object keys of errors. This will give us the name of the fields, and then we'll filter them, and we'll grab the fields that are not in our touch field set. So we'll do touched fields has field. And then we'll loop through the remaining keys and delete them from the errors object. So we'll do for each field, delete 
errors of field. Then we'll need to clear the form errors if we have any. So we'll do form clear errors and then we'll set error to errors. So when this validate function is executed, we make an inertia manual visit to our contact store route to validate the request. We grab the errors and filter them down to delete those errors that are not part of our touch field set. We then clear the form errors and set whatever errors remained. Let's test it out. I'll refresh, type something in, and here it is. The form is pre-validated. However, if we take a look inside the network tab, the form validates every time we focus out. And we should only validate if we actually have some changes. So I'll go back here and add a new variable. We'll do let needs validation. We'll set this to false. And then whenever the form data changes, we'll set it to true. And then here we'll check this variable. So we'll do if doesn't need validation, just return early. Otherwise, set needs validation to false and continue. So now if we go in the browser, refresh, type something in, we have validation, but the validate function is no longer executed unless we have actual form changes. Back to our to-do list, we went through number one, two, and three. The only one remaining is number four, which is if the validation passes, prevent action execution. So now if we go in the browser and make the form validation pass, so we'll do pinsmile.com. Now if I click outside the form, the validate function will execute and so will the route action. And we need to prevent that from happening. So if I go to my controller action here on store, once we validate, we can check for that pre-validate field. So here it is. So if request has pre-validate, just redirect back. Let's try it out. Refresh fill in the form, and if I click outside, the route action is no longer executed. I mean, it is executed, but we are redirecting back instead of following through with sending the contact message. Now, there is a world in which we don't need to check and redirect here, but we'll come to this later. For now, let's just extract that validate function into a composable so we can easily reuse it on other forms. We'll go here under the form and we'll have something like const validate and our composable will be use pre-validate. We'll pass it the form and then an object with the method, which in our case is post and the URL, which is route of contact.store. Let's create this use pre-validate We'll go to resources, JS. Let's create a composables directory. New file. And here we'll do export function use pre-validate. We'll receive the form and then method URL. And let's basically copy everything from here. So I'll go, oops, we have method here. Let's grab all this, go here, paste it in, and let's see. We can remove this. We have the validate function. We need to replace this with the, meth the URL and this with the actual method received as parameter. and we need to return the validate function. So here, we'll do return validate. And I think that's it. Let's go back to our contact and import use pre-validate. 
save. Go in the browser, refresh. Cannot resolve. Okay, we imported the wrong view here. So we need to do from view. Refresh again. And here it is. So basically now, whenever we need to pre-validate the form, we create the form using inertia, and then we grab the validate function from this use pre-validate composable. And assuming you have nothing against having this kind of checks in your controllers, this is pretty much how you can pre-validate a form in inertia.js. You can stop watching now. Of course, don't forget to like and share or subscribe, all that stuff. However, if you really want to get rid of this conditional, I have a solution, but it's shaded best. What we can do is open our app service provider, go inside the boot method and override the request validate method. We can do request and we'll use this one right here. So illuminate HTTP macro validate function. And to grab the exact parameters, we can go back to our controller, inspect the validate function, grab the parameters, paste them in. And then here we'll grab an instance of the validator and we can use the validator helper for that. We'll do validate. To get the request data, we'll do this all. And then we'll pass it the rules and the params. Now, if the validation passes, what we need to do is throw an exception, a custom exception. We'll do throw new, let's say pre-validation passed exception. And to create this exception, I'll open my terminal and say php artisan make exception, pre-validation passed exception. Let's import it. And what we can do here is tell Laravel how to handle this exception. And we can do that by adding a render method. We can do public function render and we'll just redirect back. Back to our service provider, we'll only throw this exception if our request has the pre-validate parameter. And let's go inside the controller, remove this, and I hope this will work. Let's refresh, fill in the form correctly. So we'll do, and then phone number. And then if I type outside, the route action is not executed, which is what we wanted. However, this won't work if we are using a form request object. So if we have here, let's say, I think I already created it, contact request, which basically has the same validation rules. Remove this, go in the browser, fill in the form. And if we focus out, the route action is executed, which isn't what we wanted. However, we can still tap into that request. We'll go inside the app service provider and register a new resolving callback. We'll do this app after resolving validates when resolved class function. And this will give us the request. And here we can basically do the same thing we did here. Let's try it out. I'll refresh, fill in the form, focus out, and the form action is no longer executed because our exception is thrown. However, another thing to look at is that whenever this exception is thrown, the exception is logged in our log file. So here we have it. To prevent that from happening, we can go here and say public, function report and return true. So now our exception will no longer be logged. So let's clear out the log file, go into browser, 
submit this again. Here it is. Let's check the log file and it's empty, which is what we wanted. I'll close this. I'll close this and this. And of course here we can add another macro. We can do request macro throw if prevalidate. And we'll grab this, paste it in, and replace this with request throw if prevalidate. And do the same thing here. And we're done. From now on, if I need to prevalidate a form, all I need to do is use the prevalidate composable, and then inside my controller, I can continue validating the request like I usually do. No additional changes are required. And that was it. This is how you can prevalidate forms in InertiaJS and Laravel applications. If you enjoyed the video, like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.